assalamu alaikum this is the presentation for medical students by dr mumtaz ahmed umar and today's topic is autosclerosis autosclerosis is more aptly called autospongiosis is a primary disease of bony labyrinth in this one or more foci of irregularly laid spongy bone replace part of normally dense and chondral layer of the bony otic capsule most often the otosclerotic focus involves the stapes region this one leading to stapes fixation and conductive hearing loss as we all know that once the air uh, the sound waves they travel they strike the tympanic membrane causes the vibration of the ossicles so if this area it is fixed then the it will not able to vibrate or pass the energy into the inner ear so patient will present with the hearing loss the exact cause of this condition is not yet known so this is a picture of the normal ear this is the external ear this is the middle and the inner ear this is the bony labyrinth so as autosclerosis is a disease of bony labyrinth in autosclerosis what happened the spongy bone it replaces the normal bone in the stapes region leading to stapes fixation and conductive deafness so stapes region this is the most commonly involved but other parts can also be involved this is the most commonly involved and once the stapes it get fixed the sound waves it cannot be transmitted of the conduction of the sound cannot be transmitted from the external to the inner ear leading to conductive hearing loss etiology as already mentioned the exact no cause is not known so the anatomical basis the bony labyrinth is made up of the enchondral bone which is subject to little change in life but sometimes in this hard bone there are areas of cartilage rest which due to certain non specific factors are activated to form the new spongy bone one such area is fistula antefenestrum which lies in front of the oval window and this site is more prone to get involved in this new bone formation then heredity 50% have the positive family history rest are so sporadic genetic study reveals that it is an autosomal dominant trait with incomplete penetrance and a variable expressivity why traces are more prone for to get autosclerosis in gender females are more prone the age of onset of this disease is in the from 20 to 30 years of age and rare before 10 and 40 years before 10 and after 40 years effects of other factors hearing loss due to autosclerosis may be initiate or worsens during the pregnancy similarly deafness may increase during menopause after an accident or any major operation then it is closely associated with osteogenesis imperfecta the disease may be associated with uh, with osteogenesis imperfecta with history of multiple fractures vanderhoff syndrome which is a triad of symptoms of osteogenesis imperfecta autosclerosis and blue sclera lesion of the otic capsule seen in osteogenesis imperfecta are histologically indistinguishable from those of autosclerosis then in some cases viral infections are also held responsible for the development of autosclerosis types so there are three types stapedial cochlear and histological type so the stapedial type the stapedial autosclerosis causing stapes fixation and conductive deafness is the most common variety here the lesion as already mentioned started just in front of the oval window at fistula antefenestrum and this is the site of 
anterior focus. Legion may also start behind the oval window, which is then the posterior focus, around the margins of stapes foot plate, which is circumferential in the foot plate, but annular ligament being free. This will be the biscuit type. And sometimes it may completely obliterate the oval window, causing the obliterative type. The coxial autosclerosis, it occurs near the round window or other areas in the autocapsule, autic capsule, and it may lead to sensorineural hearing loss, probably due to the liberation of toxic materials into the inner ear fluid. The histological variety is usually asymptomatic. So this is the picture showing different types of stapedial autosclerosis, the anterior focus, posterior focus, uh, circumferential, biscuit type. In biscuit type, the annular ligament is paired and obliterative type. Pathology. Grossly, the autosclerotic lesion may appear chalky white, grayish or yellow. However, in active lesions, there will be increased vascularity giving reddish appearance. Microscopically, the spongy bone appears in normally dense and contour layer of the aortic capsule. In immature focus, there will be numerous osteoblasts and osteoclasts uh, and a lot of cement substance. While in mature foci, there is less vascularity and the laying of more bony material and uh, then cementum. Symptoms. So hearing loss, this is the presenting symptom and usually starts in the 20s. It is painless and progressive with insidious onset. Often it is bilateral conductive type. Then paracusis villisi, which is uh, significant for the autosclerosis. An autosclerotic patient hears better in the noisy environment than in quiet surroundings. This is because a normal person will raise his voice in noisy surroundings. Tinnitus. It is more commonly seen in the cochlear autosclerosis and in active lesion. Vertigo is uncommon. Speech. The patient uh, with autosclerosis have a monotonous, well-modulated, soft speech. The signs on autoscopy, the tympanic membrane is usually normal and mobile. However, a reddish hue on the promontory may be visible through the tympanic membrane and this is known as short sign. The eustachian tube uh, function is normal. Turing fork tests, they will show, as I already mentioned, there will be conductive hearing loss. So the Dennis test will be negative. That means the bone conduction will be greater than air conduction. The Weber test will be lateralized to the ear with greater conductive deafness because it can be bilateral. So in such cases, the Weber will be lateralized to the ear which has more conductive deafness. Absolute bone conduction will be normal. So what different uh, differential diagnosis can come in the mind? Because eardrum is usually normal or uh, slightly dull with reddish hue, so the differential diagnosis include the serosotitis media, adhesive otitis media, tympanosclerosis, malleus head fixation, congenital stapes fixation, or ossicular discontinuity. In these last three, the tympanic membrane will be perfectly normal, while in upper three, there are some changes in the tympanic membrane. In serous otitis media, the tympanic membrane will be dull and lusterless. Adhesive otitis media will show sphere retraction uh, or uh, atelectasis. Uh, and tympanosclerosis are the chalky white deposits on the eardrum. So, as I already mentioned, uh, that uh, in the serous otitis media, the air bubbles will be visible, then eardrum it looks dull. While in adhesive otitis media or atelectic eardrum, the eardrum it is plastered towards the middle ear medial wall and these are the tympanosclerotic chalky white deposits in tympanosclerosis the rest of the differentials the eardrum will be normal looking in sta sta congenital stapes fixation malleus head fixation uh, all the the eardrum it will be normal looking 
investigations so the main investigations is basically the audiological assessment which includes the pure tone audiometry and the impedance audiometry pure tone audiometry it will show loss of air conduction especially for lower frequencies the bone conduction is normal however in some cases there is a dip in bone conduction curve and this is known as carhart's notch this is present though specific for autosclerosis but only present in 25 to 30 percent of the cases this curve is maximum at 2000 hertz impedance audiometry uh, it is a combination of a tympanometry and the stepedial reflex so in tympanometry there will be a s type of curve s is for sclerosis so we'll uh, uh, i'll show you the graphs later on and stepedial reflex it will be absent when the step is fixed completely fixed so this is the audiogram and this is the tympanogram if we look at the audiogram it is the graph which is made between the bone and the air conduction by a test known as pure tone audiometry in which pure tones are given to the patients and whenever they hear the sound they press the button and the graph is made at that particular frequency our speech frequencies are 500000 at 2000 hertz so any problem in these frequencies the person will uh, feel more problem in listening so for conductive deafness or any deafness we take the mean of these three frequencies in conductive deafness the gap between the bone and air conduction is more than 15 decibel with bone conduction graph remaining below 20 decibel and air conduction graph going above 20 decibel as by 20 because till 20 decibel the machine is so much uh, calibrated uh, as such that this below 20 is normal so bone conduction is normal but air conduction it is uh, more than normal uh, <coughs> so the other thing is the dip at 2000 hertz in bone conduction so this is carhart's notch for tympanogram the gram uh, this graph is for the test tympanometry this is the as type of curve you see the curve at zero the no, at normal pressure the curve is there the peak is there but this peak is below normal the normal level of peak or the compliance of eardrum is from 0.5 to 1.5 so it lies below 0.5 below the normal level so this is as type of graph s means sclerosis treatment there is no medical treatment that can cure autosclerosis Sodium fluoride has been tried to hasten the maturity of active focus and arrest further cochlear loss but controversies exist and this treatment is not recommended generally the mainstay of treatment treatment is surgery and it is stepidectomy or stepidotomy with replacement of prosthesis and is the treatment of choice So in stepidectomy, a part of foot plate of stapes or full full uh, stapes foot plate with stapes supra structure is removed. Prosthesis is placed on the incus, uh, long process of incus, and it is adjusted at the uh, oval window with the gel form around. In stepidotomy, the foot plate is not removed. However, a small drill hole is made. in the stapes foot plate and prosthesis again placed with uh, laterally at the incus long process of incus and medially through this hole it will stuck there the fixed autosclerotic stapes is removed and a prosthesis inserted between the incus and the oval window there are different types of uh, prosthesis which can be used namely the teflon piston Uh, the stainless steel piston platinum teflon piston titanium teflon piston so here again a drill is made the stapes it is removed stapes supra structure hole is made and the prosthesis is inserted or fixed between the incus and the oval window in stepidectomy the part of overgrowth bone 
stapes with stapes superstructure it is removed and prosthesis is fixed in place so this is the actual video this is the teflon piston uh, which is attached with the long process of the incus and here it is inserted into the stapes by drilling a hole in the foot plate above the oval window this is the round window contraindication there are certain contraindications for uh, stapedectomy or dotme if there is only one herring ear there is associated menius disease in young children because young children they have recurrent upper respiratory tract infections or gestation tube dysfunction which can uh, lead to displacement of the prosthesis then divers and frequent air travelers they have difficulty to sustain the prosthesis in place and relative contraindications include the otitis externa tympanic membrane perforation exostosis or any external artery canal disease in these cases hearing aid is usually prescribed complications of stapedectomy there can be tear of a tympanometal flap then the perforation of tympanic membrane may become permanent it they may be damage to the cauda tympani nerve or the facial nerve incus dislocation can occur patient may develop vertigo perilymph fistula this usually happens if the drill uh, on the stapes foot plate or uh, goes beyond the foot plate and damage the oval window then conductive hearing loss if the prosthesis is displaced and dead ear again if there is damage to the inner ear the ear become dead thank you